Hello everyone! Despite the usual festivities being cancelled this year, I am determined to get into the Halloween spirit. In England, at least where I live, it seems that Halloween is sort of a filler holiday. People will go out for a drunken even costume, but there's not much in the way of haunted houses, corn mazes, pumpkin patches, all those Halloween-y things, they just don't happen. No one is putting up the 12-foot Home Depot skeleton in their front yard, which is fine. But this year, as we spend so much more time at home, I want to do a little bit more to surround myself with that visual Halloween spirit. When I was growing up, I would often spend at least one weekend in October with my Auntie Bean up in LA. She lived in this amazing old house, and during Halloween time, it would be decorated all over with these amazing vintage Halloween decorations. Since then, these pieces have always really stuck with me. There's just something so whimsical yet kind of spooky about them, which I love. In this video, I'm going to do my best to try to recreate some and see if I can capture a bit of their magic for myself. So let's get going into the first project. <laughs> For this project, I'm taking inspiration from these classic paper mache decorations. They usually take the form of a pumpkin or a cat and seem to exist on a sliding scale from cute to absolutely terrifying. <laughs> when making this project, you'll need newspaper, flour, water, balloons, and painting supplies. So first things first, to make these paper mache decorations, we're going to have to have a lot of strips of newspaper. Alright, so we've got our strips of paper ready to go and the next thing to do is to blow up the balloons. Here I've got a little Frankenstein, I have a spooky witch. I used to be a kids party entertainer so I had these on hand as well as these bad boys. Just the worst ASMR of all time. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I think that's a good size for the bowl. I think I'm gonna make these guys into little candy dishes. All right, let's get to making this gloopy mixture. <laughs> So that was significantly disgusting. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna let those horrible monsters dry. <laughs> Can't imagine they're going to be ready before tomorrow to paint. So I'm gonna leave this one here, come back to it once it's dry and ready for painting, and we'll move on to project number two. <laughs> This next project is inspired by vintage paper lanterns. There are a lot of modern variations of this cut paper shadow type idea, but the one that really sparked my interest and my idea for this whole video actually is this incredible true vintage one I found on eBay. As only two sides are visible, I think I'm going to try to recreate those two sides pretty faithfully and then put my own spin on the other two and create something in the style of the lantern. <laughs> For this project, you'll need black construction paper, crepe paper, and glue. Ooh, the sun's coming out. Oh, sorry. I'm allergic to the sun. Jeez. Uh, all right, so I've now finished cutting out both the cat and the gourd. So now I'm about to do the ones that I designed myself. So for these two, I decided to keep it simple with one of them being a little ghost and the other one being a star and moon. Yes, there is a pebble I sure can read. I would like to 
wish I knew something to keep my man out of the street. After that's done, it's time to glue the sides together. I'll save the final reveal for the end because I think I want to wait to film something at night where it's a little bit spooky. So stick around to see how that looks and we'll get to gluing. This last project is based on this witchy fortune telling wheel. My aunt had one of these in her house and when I'd visit, I would want to play with it so badly. I've always loved any old timey fortune telling device and I still use them anytime I go to the seaside arcades. Most of the examples I've seen have had quite a traditionally spooky witch, but I want to draw a cute witch and there's at least some sort of precedent for it. I found this witch die cut in my search through old decorations. So I think I'm going to base my witch off of her. Mm. Who could kick off such an angel? Mm. All right, so for this project, you'll need construction paper, paint or marker, paper fastener, and scissors. I've lightly traced her out. So I'm going to paint her out with uh, some black paint, and I'm gonna do some highlights with sort of a bony color as well, just to make it a bit more interesting, and then I will tackle the spinny die. <laughs> So I finished cutting the little spinning die and I added a few little more details to me girl. So all I have to do now is attach it with little paper fastener. And then the last thing I have to do is come up with all the fortunes for her. I'm going to enlist the help of this book, the Dictionary of Superstitions, to see if I can go through the pages and find some witchy, interesting things I can turn into, fortunes, prophecies. Because of its association with hair, the humble hairpin is not without magical significance. Finding a hairpin promises making a new friend. Losing one is more ominous, suggesting that an enemy is close at hand. That is bad news for me. As I imagine, my disgusting, disgusting children are not dry yet. So I will save those till tomorrow to give them their paint job. So it's the next day. Miraculously, they are dry. I guess first things first is to pop these balloons. Oh god. Oh. oh gosh, they are absolutely full of flower dust. No surprise there. Oh good. I can I was able to um, pop in the bottom a little bit so they'll actually sit like a candy dish. Oh, that's so much better. So now is the part where we get to painting. I think I'm gonna base the cat one on this die cut here. And then for the pumpkin, I think I am going to base it off of this guy. Um, so one thing I am noticing, if for some reason this makes you want to try paper mache, which I don't know, why it would, it's so disgusting. Uh, try to use only light paper, because you can see the dark paper is coming through. So I'll try that once this is dry to do a second coat, but you know, something to think about, something I didn't even, that didn't even cross my mind. Yeah, keep it in mind. Let's get back to painting. So I'm pretty happy with where these guys are at right now, actually. So I think the last thing to do is to clean up some of the edges, go in with the detail brush and add some of those finishing touches and extra details. And then it's time for the reveal. <laughs>
right, here we are with another project completed. There were some highs and lows in this project. A bit reluctant to admit it, but I think the paper mache turned out really nice in the end. I think they look great, but I am not sure that the ends justify the means. It is a pretty painful process. Can't believe we let kids do it. The second project, the lantern, I am very happy with. The only way I could be more pleased is if I happen to own the vintage version but for not being able to afford that or source it, I'm so happy. And then last but not least, the fortune teller. She cute. I got to write a bunch of silly fortunes. Probably will add a few more different fortunes for people to rummage through when they come over. Not that anyone's coming over. We're still in a global pandemic. <laughs> and I think that about wraps it up this week. Thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. If you enjoyed the video, it would really mean a lot if you could like it. And if you want to see more from me, please subscribe. I upload videos almost every Friday. I mean, it's been every Friday so far, but I'm leaving myself uh, room for failure. <laughs> All right, I hope you have a great day wherever you are, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye! <laughs> then I could say what I'm feeling and concealing.